Hi everybody, my name is Erin and this is Waiting Moose. Today I'm going to be doing a review of what a lot of people consider a beach read because of its cover, um, and that is The High Tide Club by Mary Kay Andrews. Now this book did not really fit what I would have considered <laughs> to be a beach read. How, for most people, it's totally a beach read for me because guys, there's murder, there's mayhem, there's family secrets, there's skeletons in the closet. It was just a delight. So, so let's talk about this. Have you guys read, first of all, it's a brand new release. I believe it was released in early April or late March. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have the exact release date on this. Um, I have read Mary Kay Andrews previously, uh, writing as Kathy Hogan Trochak, and that series was fantastic because it was a murder mystery series. It was kind of a cozy mystery series, actually. I was offered this book through NatGalley by the publisher, and being that it was Mary Kay Andrews, and I've got books of hers on my shelf to read, I thought, yes, yes, I want to read this. And so I requested it, and I read it. And you guys, it was longer than I expected it to be, because I expected Beach Read. Um, and it's not really... Beach reads aren't really, I mean, for me, what people consider beach reads aren't really in my bag. Typically they're contemporary, they're set on the beach, they're not really my thing. So, um, this one was set on a beach. I thought it had some extremely, some really great strong female friendships. And I, reading some of the other reviews of it, I feel like I read it differently than other people did, which happens all the time. So the biggest thing is there was a group of friends, there were five of them I want to say, it's been a while since I read, it's been a couple weeks since I read the book, um, and most of them were wealthy white women in the early 1900s. Early 1900s? 1950s? Somewhere in there? So, and then one of them was a black girl who was a servant girl at one of the wealthy um, homes. So. But she was kind of the same age as the rest of the girls, and some people see it as, the, like, she, they treated her like a doll to dress up and not really like a person. But I think that shows, to me, that shows the time period. Um, and the fact that these girls did give this, like, they didn't give her cheap things in a joking way. They gave her expensive gifts, like dresses and shoes and jewelry tried to involve her in their lives as much as they could, which was limited at that time. Now, at this, there's two storylines here, right? There's the, the first storyline where um, it's set in the past, um, the wealthy girls, and then there is one of these women who is dying of cancer in the present day, and she summons a lawyer to her because she wants to um, divide up her property, this island that she owns, off the coast of one of the Carolinas. I should know that. Uh, <laughs> it's probably not even Carolina right now. Okay, so I just thought that, you know, the, the dual timelines sometimes can be a problem for me. I really enjoyed this. At times I felt that just as I was getting into one of the plots, she would drag me back to the other time period, but it wasn't as painful as I've had it happen in other books where she's like, oh, that's your version of a cliffhanger. Great, now I have to go read about something I don't care about because I cared about both time periods. The past and present stories begin to echo each other at a point in the book. Now we find out that most of the original characters from the, the early time period have passed away. We learn a lot of family secrets through this, a lot of, you know, buried stories that just, you know, were covered up because it was much easier to cover things up back then. Things that even um, characters in the book didn't know, like the, the current day, didn't know about their pasts, which was fascinating. And I know that you don't want to think it about people that you love and care about, but I wonder how many skeletons there were in the closets of my family, my relatives, my ancestors. I'm guessing a few, but anyway. Um, so. The past and present actually starts to echo each other through the friendships that are built. So there are a group of friends in the past, there's a group of friends in the present. And the group of friends in the present are sort of pushed together by the circumstances of this story. So there are, again, it's very similar to the makeup of the group of the past. Um, and some of the storyline, you can see it echoing. And it's just like, oh my God, you guys are like doing the same things. 
I did find that the char one character from the past who brought everybody together that joined the two timelines, she was hard to like at times. She was not a good person. Was she racist? Yeah, actually I think she was. Um, was she a good person? No, I don't think she was. Um, she pushed everyone away, and that could be because she was an introvert, or it could be because she was a complete jerk, or both. You know, introverts aren't immune to being jerks. I did find that some of the female friendships in the current day developed a lot faster than I'm used to. And I mean, we're talking about someone who's like, I've worked with this woman at work for a year. Actually, there's two women at work that I've worked with. Well, a lot of women at work. But in the case of these two women, I've worked with one for about a year and the other one for like two years. And in both cases, I call them my coworkers. I don't call them my friends. And and that's probably on me because it like, the one like invites me to do things outside of work and I haven't yet, but you know, whatever. It's just one of those things where I'm like, oh, well, you know. So it's, it's really hard for me to look at this situation and be like, yeah, I would totally start making friends with these people in this situation, because I wouldn't. Um, so there was that. I thought that that was a little bit um, interesting. So, but given my introvertedness, I'm not sure that I'm the right person to comment on how quickly friendships formed. That little issue that I had with the book didn't seriously affect my enjoyment and the reason why I read this book, which was The Secrets and the Murder. I wanted to know. I needed to know all of the deeds. I needed the mysteries solved. I really think that was where the book shone, shone um, to a reader, to, to this reader. Um, I know a lot of people were like, oh, well, this kind of sucked. It wasn't the beach read. It wasn't, you know, they were lo looking for all about the friendships and, and that stuff that was formed. And maybe it wasn't well developed um, because they didn't like the book. And I love the book because the mystery and the secrets were so fascinating. And just enough, I, I thought that, you know, that the author kind of provided enough information um, in each chapter as the book went along to keep you interested and feed you enough to be like, yeah, okay, I'm sticking around because whatever she just revealed is awesome enough that I want to know more. I mean, she answered a question, but left questions. Oh, it's perfect. And then there was, in the present day, there was quite a bit of conflict imbued in, in the story and um, mysteries themselves as, as people, as the modern day characters learned more about their past and themselves. I thought that this was just an absolute delight to read and I think it proved to me that Mary Kay Andrews is a, maybe not a master of suspense. No, she might be a master of suspense. I mean, I'm not comparing her to an Agatha Christie or anything like that. Different time periods, different types of books. But I do think that this kind of cemented her in my mind as an author to read when it comes to cement. This is cement. Suspense. And I gave it four out of five stars. I am so glad that I saw this in my email from NetGalley and that I did decide to read it as part of my ongoing um, attempt to keep up on current literature while reading a lot of backlist. So yeah, have you read this book? Let me know what you thought. I Have you read Mary Kay Andrews? Because I know some people do, some people don't. Um, is that your kind of book? Is that your kind of read? I will definitely be going and scouting out some more of her books from, um, I hope you can't hear that my neighbor is fixing the fence, I think. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. Bye.